Time now for the gloating portion of the show. <laughs> the best team in the country and eventual back-to-back -back champions, the Yukon Huskies, rattled off a 30 to nothing run to start the second half and sent the Illini home. Yukon back to the Final Four. In this tournament, Brew, Yukon has trailed for less than 30 seconds. Also, now have the longest tournament streak of 10-point wins in tournament history. Brew, can anyone beat the mighty Yukon Huskies? Yes. Yes. Themselves? I, I no, no. Oh. I mean, look, they're the best team in the nation. If these were seven-game series, they would clearly win. But in a one-and-done, and I look, and, and fortunately, they have a coach who will not let them relax. And I that's know. good. That's why they're so great. Danny mm -hmm. Early, he won't let them relax. So that's a positive. But, guys, I'm older than you. If you didn't know, I'm older than you guys. Oh, we, everyone knows. <laughs> I have seen teams look this dominant and not win. Who? Five Slam Jamma with Akeem they, Olajuwon that lost they, to NC State? They, they, right. But Patrick they, Ewing's Georgetown team that lost yeah, to Villanova? Yeah, so, oh, I mean, we. Th this is like a scary position to be in because a lot of UNLV, when they lost to Duke, a lot of times when teams just roll through, so they lose. A, they can lose one game. So all right. So a couple points. And I don't think I'm not saying they will, but yes, they the, could. The reason I said who was because to Wilds's point, we've never seen this. We've never seen a team win this many tournament Double games in a row, in all in blowout dominated. fashion. Right. NC State, in which I know we'll get to, is obviously a unique one because they were a huge underdog and because the NC State underdog now exists 41 years right. later in this tournament. But the UNLV team that lost to Duke, that Duke team was, was a fellow juggernaut. You know what I mean? The, with the but it wasn't five. close to – I mean, it, it looked like that, that the UNLV had dusted them the year no, before. I, I understand. Had but Larry the, Johnson. The, I, I get – my point is, with respect to Purdue, I don't look at this Purdue team as a juggernaut. I think they're a really good team. And so Fab Five team lost to a great team. And so – and it lost right. in heartbreaking fashion, obviously. I just – Brew, you know this pains me. Here we go. Well, it's just <sighs> <laughs> happens, every, happens about once a month, everybody. It's like the eclipse. No. Get ready for this. Put your sunglasses on if you got it at home. Get ready. Wilds was right there all along. There we go. Along. Thank you. He was, Wilds <laughs> was right all. <laughs> You're not really. <laughs> Wild, I mean, Wilds, since we were doing, like, the preseason tournament promos on this show, not preseason, but before conference tournament season yeah. games, he was calling the Huskies the future back to two back-to-back -back. Back champs. Yeah. And they did just have, Brew, a 30 to nothing run nothing. against a team that entered the tournament ranked 10th in the country. Can I make you feel... I, if no, you want I, to change. I, I picked the, UConn. I'm not saying they're going to get beat. I'm so just saying I understand it's not an impossibility. Teams can get hot. You can ebb and flow. They just had their bad game. I think the first half, I think the starters outside of Klingon was were like one for 17. But the defense never goes away. Last year's defense won the national championship. This year's defense has gotten even better. So 53 uh, points per, per game. Field goal percentage is down. Opponents threes way down. So the idea that you're going to get an open look and maybe get hot, that's not happening. I mean, four and a half threes a game. I mean, like, they do have it all. They've yeah. got experience. They've got size with Klingon. They, they're, and, and you guys know, you always hear me talk about five-man basketball. That's what they play. Everybody's Old moving. School. The ball is moving. I like it. They if were like my pick. They, I'm just saying, if Bruce it, it could on any happen given Sunday. any given Sunday, yeah, yeah, Saturday, yeah. Tuesday, no. whatever it is, no. Monday no. night. Number 11, <laughs> North Carolina State takes down Duke to get to the Final Four. DJ Burns goes for 29 points in the win. Nick, how impressive has their run been? All right. I don't want to be hyperbolic, but this is one of the wildest runs in college basketball history. This team lost twice to Syracuse. I watched one of those games in full. Syracuse, not very good. Syracuse beat them twice before the ACC tournament. This team, it's not just that they had to win all five ACC tournament games mm -hmm. to get here, and now obviously this. So nine straight games that they had to win or they would be out. Seven of those nine, they were underdogs. They were they, So they have been underdogs in seven of their last nine, including one, two, three, four, four times by at least eight points, twice by double digits. And, I mean, they just rolled Duke. The, six 
must win games a go, they're in this circumstance. Down, we can show it to you. Down three, two seconds left, or five seconds left, with Virginia at the line. They miss a free throw. This terrible shot clangs in <laughs> accidentally. And now all of a sudden, they're in the final four. It's pretty good. And so I just, I, it is similar. Listen, Jimmy V's team, they, they won the ACC tournament and they went on their crazy run for NC State 41 years ago. But this is more improbable. This is really, you think? Well, they finished it, but that became so improbable. They only had of, three at that time. It took three games to win the ACC. Right, it, and that and that team was better in the regular season. This team finished ninth in the ACC. Well, here's what's interesting, and and obviously the the comparison to Valvano, everybody's making, and it's appropriate. Yeah. All right. Neither team, Valvano's in '83 that went on to win the championship over Elijah Ryan and Drexler, and this team. Neither one of them was going to make the tournament if they didn't win the ACC tournament. Yep. Both of them had 17 wins when they went into the ACC tournament. Yep. So they played more. They were 17 and 10 and 83, 17 and 14 this year. They've beaten the second seed Marquette, fourth seed Duke twice in this nine-game stretch, and number one seed North Carolina, obviously, twice. All right, or, or beat, not twice, but beat them. Mm -hmm. And so... It's incredibly impressive. And this is what I'm talking about. Strange things happen in March, Wilds. Okay. Strange things. All right, I have two, two notes. One, the last five 11 seeds to make the Final Four lose this game. They, no one's made it to the Final Two. So mm -hmm. I know strange things happen, but eventually 11 seeds <laughs> turn into a pumpkin. Typically, okay. those are okay. major story. teams, though, okay. to be fair. The, right, see, no, UCLA one. was 11. Oh, LSU. Was Syracuse an 11 when, when we made it? No, I think okay. we were uh, 10. 8. The, the, we they were at eight when the we made it in 2010, okay. but in 2016, I think we were. No eight. team with 14 okay. losses that ever made the Final Four. Yeah, because because you have to win your conference tournament if you have I'm just, to I'm, I'm just trying to be nice, yeah. but they're probably going to lose. I, I hope. They were a 10? What a pull by Wilds. Uh, Peter Schroeger, I think I said eight, though. You said, the, yeah, that was terrible. Well, a lot of times if you, you just <laughs> are confident. Spoke to and texted multiple scouts, GMs about NC State big man DJ Burns as an NFL Offensive tackle prospect or the last 24 hours? He's listed at 6'9", probably 6'7". Uh, Bruce, do you like this? I do. I, and I actually think watching him, he's, his footwork is tremendous. He's obviously athletic. He's agile. He's strong. Now, the only question, I don't know if he played in high school. My guess would be that he did, as big as he is. But my only question is his toughness. I'm not saying he looks like he's not tough. I can't tell. I'm just saying, does he have the toughness to play football? If he does, I actually do think he could make the transition. I think, listen, I, I think he has a better chance at the NFL than the NBA. And so, yeah. uh, if you you know what I mean? Yep. The, his, he has great size for an NFL tackle if he puts on the weight. His size makes him pounds. a non-starter for the NBA at his yeah. position. Yep. And so, if he wants to play pro sports in America, I think that's awesome. And I buy that. I think that's smart. I think that looking for guys like, hey, they check these boxes from a trait standpoint right. as far as athleticism or just size, yep. strength, yep. and then see if we can teach them some of the other stuff. I think that's smart. Right, so We've save, seen it, obviously, with tight ends. More, more yeah. so with tight ends. Save, save that thought because uh, this brother. drives me crazy here. What? Finally, Purdue. Over the volunteers. Zach Eady dominant. 40 points, 16 rebounds. Bru, do you like him in the NBA? I don't like him in the NBA, but let me give him some love. Wink, I'm winking at Dusty right now. Okay. Again, Dusty forced me to put up this graphic. It's impressive. Rude, I, I will give you that. Rude. Look at this. In the last 60 years, and nobody has done what he's done in this tournament since Elvin Hayes in 1968. Yeah. And by the way, that Bill Bradley game, I think, was the third place game, which I don't think should count. I looked this up. <laughs> wow. Bradley scored 58. I'm like, he scored 58 in the, the championship that they won? I was like, no, it was third place game. The other team probably didn't care. Uh, yeah. But go ahead. But third look, place game. Get when, when you're talking about bigs in the NBA, scouts, they look for three things. Can he defend block to block? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can he defensive rebound? Yes. Yeah. All right. Can he guard the screen and roll? And that's obviously no. Now, there's others that can't. You know, Gobert's not awesome at it. He drops. But Gobert's more athletic than this guy, moves better. I, I, look, I think he'll get drafted. If I were a team, I'd look at him as a second rounder. I'd, uh, he'd be on a roster, and he'll be a guy that sees a few minutes, but he's not going to be a regular player in the NBA, well, uh, in my view. Before I give my answer, what are you driven crazy by here, Wilds? 
Nerds. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> Just the nerds are ruining everything. Why? It drives me crazy that I'm reading his draft profile, and it's like, well, can he defend the three? He's like, man, but I'm seven foot four. I got to defend threes. Hey, he's only taken two threes all year. He's playing winning basketball. They're, what, 35 and four? He's scoring 40 points. He's the reigning national player of the year. He can't get to the next level and play NBA basketball. But, Meanwhile, the Chiefs are drafting rugby guys. I'm like, yeah, that'll work. But we just talked about him. It That's just drives me nuts that but here's the thing, a like, great college basketball player can't play. I'm going to give you a name. Luke Garza. Just a few years ago at Iowa, Luke Garza, who's 6'11", Naismith player of the year, Wooden player of the year, He's on a team. He got drafted in the second round by Detroit. He's sitting on the bench in Minnesota. That's what Zach yeah, Eadie will pl- do. Oh, okay. The best players his age are in the NBA. Hey, you already, right. You don't even have to give Luke Garza. We, the Kevin Pitt snoggle. You cry tears for that guy. What about Jimmer? Jimmer's not as good that, as Zach Eadie. But, but J- Jimmer wasn't? No, Jimmer, Jim, no, yeah, no, well, and Pitt Snoggle. No, no, but Pitt Snoggle was not quite as good. But Jimmer I'm saying, can't play the defense. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, exactly. That, listen, there, you said it. You said it exactly right. Put him on the right. Warriors. Hold on. Wait a second. First of all, just so you know, he, no. the, Kevin no. O'Connor uh, said that he thought his fit on the Thunder could be interesting because Chet How can take care of the Thunder. No, because Chet could take care of this, a lot and of the defensive stuff. Oh, I like that. Gavoni now just recently said he could be a late lottery pick, yeah. which seems high for me. Mm-hmm. I the. Now, with all that said, there is such a thing as being a great college player that does not guarantee you are a great pro player. Here's what he does deserve Tyler massive Hayes, credit bro. for. There's a record that has stood for basically my entire life, and that is most points in the NCAA tournament. Do you guys know who holds it? One of the greatest video game players ever, Glenn Rice. from the Oh, NBA. yeah. Uh, 182. Edie's at 120. Or 184, pardon me. So he's averaging 30 a game. If he, you know, 180 times six uh, or six, 30 times six would be 180. So if he has 65 points, 32 and a half in the next two games, he breaks Glenn Rice's record. Maybe you can win the title. Like you said, he can be a legendary all time college basketball player and still be a guy that's going to have a hard time finding a spot. In the NFL, like or that, NBA, or in yeah. the NBA, pardon me. Yeah, actually easier in the NFL. He'll be <laughs> on the roster. He'll be on the roster. And it sounds like he'll be a first-round pick. Okay. Should be late. Just, that's not, that's not the thing to blame roster. nerds for. Here we go. Wild oh. still, still gun-shy. I told you guys. The you internet can't do it. No left. left. There you go. No, you got no, no left. left. <laughs> no left. I'm out here like Jalen Brown. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.